The male protagonist of this anime, Akito, is a lucky boy who gets a chance to live with five beautiful girls. Also, these girls are all very fond of him and want to have close physical contact with him every day. Therefore, they try various means, such as locking themselves inside the warehouse with him to enjoy the precious time of being together alone, deliberately showing him their hot figures, and even sneaking into his bed. All of this is just a small part of his life. How will the girls show their charm to attract Akito to be their husband? Like and subscribe, and let's start today's recap. We are first introduced to the female protagonist, Akiko. Right now she is alone on the subway heading to Mijiro, intending to meet her brother, Akito. It has been a long time since she last saw him. After their parents passed away, the siblings were placed under the care of different relatives. Until today, they have finally broken free from their respective foster families, and there is a chance for them to live together again. Akito lives in a student dormitory at St. Liliana High School. When Akiko knocks on the door, he is ready to go out to pick her up at the station. The moment he sees Akiko, he is pleasantly surprised. The siblings are meeting again after six years, and they are looking forward to living together. It is worth mentioning that the reason why they are able to live together in the student dormitory is that Akito transferred to Akiko's school. Akiko's luggage has arrived ahead of schedule, and they are busy tidying up their luggage and cleaning their room all day. Akito is worried that his sister is very tired and tells her to take a bath first. Right now, he can never expect that Akiko's affection for him is far beyond the love between siblings. While she is taking a shower, she has been waiting for Akito to peek at her in the bathroom. Seeing Akito not come, she feels very disappointed. After taking a bath, Akiko asks Akito why he is not interested in her hot body. Akito can't understand his sister's thoughts. They are siblings, and he thinks that only perverts will peep at their sisters. But Akiko is immovable. She claims that if Akito doesn't come to peek at her, she won't leave the bathroom. In the end, Akito keeps the bottom line between the siblings and does not enter the bathroom. Akiko's anger reaches its limit. When Akito comes to give her luggage, she makes a request. As long as Akito sleeps with her at night, she will forgive him. Akito reminds her that they are 16 years old and cannot sleep in the same bed. Unexpectedly, Akiko mistakenly thinks he means that they can have intimate interactions elsewhere. She is looking forward to becoming a real couple with her brother. Wherever Akito wants to do something shy with her, she can accept it. Akito hurriedly explains that he just wants to sleep alone. They are siblings, and he will never have an intimate relationship with her. Undeterred, in her efforts to make Akito like her, Akiko not only puts on a t-shirt with I love my sister printed on it but also prepares a hearty breakfast for him. She tells Akito that a brother complex is a very rare form of love and hopes he will acknowledge this unique affection. Akito, however, doesn't want to engage in meaningless discussions with her and frequently interrupts her. Akiko, on the other hand, believes that this is a sign of their deep affection for each other and that Akito has fallen into her trap without realizing it. Although Akito always rejects her, Akiko enjoys her time with him immensely. She is grateful to Akito for taking her out of her foster family and plucks up the courage to show him her affection. Unexpectedly, Akiko gives the same response. Overly shy, Akiko faints. Living alone with Akito makes her so happy every moment, and she feels like she is dreaming. But she never expects that there are three other girls living in this old student dormitory. They are Arashi, the president of the student council, Anastasia, the vice president, and Jinbi, the accountant. Akiko, as the secretary of the student council, is very familiar with them, but she has a very serious brother complex and does not want him to have contact with other girls. What she can't accept the most is that they all fall in love with Akito. Even when they eat together, they will fight for the place next to Akito. Akiko takes Akito as her possession, and she thinks that only she is qualified to sit next to Akito. In the face of true love, it doesn't matter though they are blood-related. Arashi disagrees with Akiko's idea and suggests that she ask Akito first. When Akito says he cherishes and loves Akiko, Akiko can't help but start fantasizing about their marriage. Unexpectedly, Akito immediately gives a qualification. That is, his love for her is only the love between siblings. This is undoubtedly bad bad news for Akiko, but she insists that even if he is her brother, it is fine as long as she loves him. In fact, Akiko's brother complex is influenced by a novelist. She has a deep admiration for the author's sibling-themed works and often fantasizes about being married to Akito. One day, Akito hears Akiko laughing while she's reading a novel. He enters her room and sees the book she is reading. Because the book's cover looks a bit erotic, Akiko explains that it is a literary work about sibling love and even reads a passage from it to him. Akito interrupts her, expressing his willingness to respect her reading preferences but asking her not to read such books in his presence. Akiko agrees to his request. 
But what she doesn't know is that Akito is her favorite author. Jino, Akito's personal editor, admires him. After receiving his newly created works about siblings, she is pleasantly satisfied. Hearing her compliment, Akito can't help but think of Akiko. For him, writing such novels is only a way of making a living, and he still can't accept Akiko. Ever since Akito arrived at the new school, Akiko has often come to his class to look for him. Akiko is very straightforward, and she persuades Akito to become her lover every day. Even if Akito refuses, she still doesn't give up. In addition to Akiko, three other girls also quickly take action. The first girl to come to Akito is Anastasia. She asks him to have a picnic with her the following weekend. As it's under a girl, she always stresses that she doesn't really want to hang out with Akito. But actually, she desires to date him alone. At her insistence, Akito agrees to her request. The second girl is Jinbi. She gives Akito the cookies she made in her cooking class. Akito loves these cookies very much. He and Jinbi have known each other for six years, and Jinbi knows Akito's taste for food very well. The third girl is Arashi. She calls Akiko to the student council office in the name of the student council president. Her intention is quite clear, which is to have an intimate interaction with him. At this moment, Akiko, Jinbi, and Anastasia enter the office in succession, putting a halt to her actions. Akiko believes she is the person closest to Akito. When Akito has not yet adapted to the new environment, she is the most suitable person to accompany him. However, Arashi believes that the reason Akito can't integrate into the new class is because Akiko keeps going to find him during breaks. Akiko realizes her mistake and decides not to approach him as frequently. The battle over Akito is not over. One day, Akiko asks Akito to help replace the light bulb in her room. During the chat, Akiko accidentally exposes her true intentions. She plans to throw herself on Akito from behind while he changes the light bulb. If Akito likes to be the dominant one during their intimacy, she can also be the one who gets sneaked up on. Akito directly rejects Akiko. Unexpectedly, when he is about to collect clothes, they start to argue because of underclothes. Akiko doesn't mind Akito peeking at her private parts, but she doesn't want him to treat her underclothes like normal clothes. Anastasia overhears their conversation, but she is very tolerant of Akito. No matter what he does to her underclothes, she can accept it. At this time, Jinbi notices that Arashi's underclothes are missing. Arashi explains that she accidentally lost it. If Akito wants to see it, she can take her clothes off right away. Unexpectedly, before she can act, a gust of wind suddenly blows around her. In order to prevent Akito from seeing Arashi's private part, Akiko covers his eyes immediately. Afterward, Anastasia asks Akito to help her tidy up her belongings. She comes from a wealthy family and never did any housework. Therefore, after she moved to the dormitory, she never sorted out her luggage. Akito sees this as a good opportunity for her to learn to do housework and offers to guide her. With their joint efforts, Anastasia's room gradually becomes tidy. In her last piece of luggage, she has a collection of various dolls. She worries that Akito may think she is too childish and doesn't want him to see them. However, Akito is delighted that he sees this different side of her and finds her incredibly adorable. Anastasia feels extremely shy and it seems she is growing fonder of Akito. In order to become Akito's girlfriend, she confesses to him during lunch break. Akiko is afraid that they will become a couple, so she can only keep making strange noises to interrupt them. Unexpectedly, Anastasia forces Akito to touch the softest part of her body. Because Akiko and Akito are overly anxious, Anastasia has to claim she was just joking. However, she doesn't give up on Akito. Akito, believing that one day he will come to like her. Akito doesn't know what Anastasia is thinking. After school, he buys a cake for Jinbi and offers to go to her room for tea, intending to express his gratitude towards Jinbi. Because Jinbi transferred to St. Liliana High School with him in order to go to school with him, and he feels very happy to have Jinbi as a good friend. During the period, Akito compliments Jinbi's new clothes and thinks she is very cute. Overly shy, Jinbi accidentally spills the tea on her clothes. Akito, worrying that Jinbi will scald herself, hurriedly wipes her clothes, but accidentally touches her private part. As a result, Jinbi slaps him. After leaving Jinbi's room, Akito helps Anastasia rearrange the room. Anastasia warns Akito not to tell others about her love of collecting dolls. Akito, however, thinks it's normal to like dolls and tells her not to think too much. As Akito is about to leave, Anastasia stops him. She deliberately eats a banana in front of him, hinting that he should have intimate interactions with her. Then she pretends to accidentally step on a banana peel and pounces on Akito. Akito is a simple boy. He finds Anastasia very strange today and does not understand what she wants to do. This frustrates Anastasia very much. When Akito asks if she has a fever, she runs away in a hurry. 
Later, because Akito refuses to bathe with the girls, the girls decide to help bathe each other. Arashi specially prepares two bottles of shower gel, but she accidentally takes the lotion as a shower gel, so she has to ask Akito to bring the shower gel. When Akito arrives at the door of the bathroom, he is too shy to come in, so Jinbi heads to get the shower gel. Because the floor is too slippery, she accidentally falls on Akito. Seeing Jinbi without clothes, Akito feels very shy. Afterward, Akito receives a call from Jino. Jino invites him to write a short story and suggests meeting on Sunday to discuss it. During the conversation, she hears Akiko's voice and learns that Akito has a sister. Since Akito has been writing stories with sibling themes, she is worried that he may be romantically interested in his sister. To assist Akito in staying away from this forbidden relationship, Jino decides to figure out how to win his favor. On the day when they meet, Jino deliberately dresses in a very sexy outfit, which she learned in a women's magazine. Intending to have intimate interactions with Akito, she changes many sexy poses, but none of them arouses Akito's desire. Because what Jino said and did are so familiar, Akito thinks of a magazine he has read. Noticing that Akito takes out the magazine, Jino hurriedly explains that she is just worried that Akito will have a relationship with his sister. Akito firmly says that he won't mix reality up with fantasy and swears he doesn't have any thoughts about falling in love with his sister, but Jino can tell that Akito cares deeply about his sister and remains suspicious of him. When Akito returns to his dormitory, he is blocked in the warehouse by Arashi. To make matters worse, Akiko mistakenly thinks there is no one inside and locks the door of the warehouse. Arashi sees this as a great opportunity and intends to force Akito into intimacy with her. Akito has really weak strength. Every time he escapes, he will be captured by Arashi. At this time, Akito notices that the clay pot on the shelf is falling and hurriedly pushes Arashi away, causing Arashi to be very impressed. A few days later, Jino receives the short work done by Akito. She is moved by his delicate words and once again suspects that he is a siskon. To confirm whether Akito has a sister complex, Jino comes to his residence to investigate. Akito does not disclose his authorship, and the girls only know that she is Akito's partner in business. Since Akiko isn't present, Jino takes the initiative to inquire with the girls about whether Akito is extremely fond of his sister. Surprisingly, all the girls give an affirmative response. Akito consistently refuses to admit to this. Conveniently, when Akiko returns to the dormitory, he suggests that Jino ask Akiko for her thoughts. Akiko doesn't believe that Akito is a siskon, but she acknowledges having a severe brother complex. Her biggest dream is to turn Akito into a siskon. Akito doesn't respond to Akiko's feelings, but he can't resist teasing her. The girls have long been accustomed to their sibling banter, but they don't want them to become a real couple. Akito's and Akiko's rooms are separated by only one door. In order not to leave them alone together, Arashi proposes they live separately. Akito is very supportive of Arashi's opinion and takes the initiative to move to a room far away from Akiko. While he is sorting out his belongings, many memories about him and his sister flood into his mind. He returns to his previous room and finds Akiko waiting for him. He can't help but touch Akiko's face, swearing that he will love her forever. Later, Arashi finds a dormitory administrator, Arisa, a talented girl with excellent intelligence. Because Akito was once fostered in Arisa's house, he can be considered Arisa's older brother, but she has another identity, Akito's fiancé. Arisa is four years younger than Akito. She is not only cute in appearance, but also proficient in all kinds of household chores. Everyone except Akiko likes Arisa. Akito wants them to get along well with each other. He tells Akiko that Arisa used to help him often. To him, Arisa is like his biological sister. Akiko, however, considers herself his only sister, and coupled with Arisa's constant claim to be Akito's fiancé, she feels that she is a threat to her position. Although she doesn't hate Arisa, they are rivals in love and can't be friends. Because Akiko has been reluctant to accept Arisa, Arashi suggests they have a competition. If Arisa wins, Akiko has to peacefully coexist with her. The competition that Akiko devises is to see who understands Akito better. However, all she can think of are things from their childhood. Arisa has lived with Akito for six years and knows the current Akito better than she does. After the competition ends, Akiko admits that she has lost to Arisa. She can accept Arisa becoming the dormitory manager, but she can't give up Akito. At this time, Arisa raises the question of whether Akiko and Akito are related by blood, and can she really like her brother? She reminds Akiko that she can't like Akito, either legally or ethically. These words are a great blow to Akiko, but she refuses to give up on Akito no matter what. Akiko and Arisa have a fierce argument, and neither of them wants to lose to the other. Finally, they decide to let Akito make a choice between them. Akito compliments them separately and says he can't choose any of them. They are all his sisters and he will treat them fairly. 
After being rejected by Akito, Akiko realizes that she and Arisa shared the same troubles. They are the people in the world who know and like Akito the most. But because they are Akito's sisters, these advantages become meaningless. She thinks they should unite against other girls who like Akito. Arisa agrees with Akiko's idea very much, and they all put aside their hostility toward each other. Before summer arrives, the girls go to the mall to buy swimsuits. Except for Jinbi, each girl has already chosen their desired swimsuit. Jinbi feels very self-conscious about her body and believes she doesn't need a swimsuit. Akiko is very good at selecting swimsuits. She tells Jinbi that there are many different types of swimsuits available. By choosing the one that suits her best, she can make her body look even more perfect. With her assistance, Jinbi puts on a very cute swimsuit. Back in the dormitory, the girls hold a swimsuit contest and ask Akito to go to their rooms to appreciate them in turn. This is a very sweet torture for Akito. More surprisingly, Arashi wears nothing in order to show off her hot body. Akito can't choose between them and can only decide that all of them win. Soon after, Akito falls ill with a cold and has to ask Jino to delay the deadline. The girls quarrel fiercely over the opportunity to take care of Akito. Arashi proposes that everyone take turns taking care of Akito. Unexpectedly, her proposal arouses the desire of others to win, and they decide to compete to see who can give the best care to Akito. The first to take care of Akito is Arisa. She prepares hearty food as well as some apparently extravagant folk remedies. Akito is shocked at these remedies, but he still follows Arisa's instructions. The second person is Anastasia. She isn't good at taking care of sick people, so she keeps asking Akito what he wants. But Akito just wants to sleep and ignores her. Anastasia really wants to kiss Akito and asks him to close his eyes. Unfortunately, before she can kiss him, Akito notices her intention. She feels very shy and hastily runs away. Akiko is the third one. She gently strokes Akito's hair and makes him lie on her lap. She is very fond of Akito and vows to be by his side forever. The last one is Jinbi. Seeing Akito fall into a deep sleep, she doesn't disturb him. During then, she hears Akito talking in a dream about their childhood, which reminds Jinbi of their first encounter. At that time, Akito just transferred to Kyoto. At first, he left a bad impression on Jinbi, who thought that it was very hypocritical of his smile. But Akito was interested in her and offered to be friends with her. After learning that Akito wanted to make friends, Jinbi told the other male students in class about this. With her help, Akito had many friends. But Akito only wanted to be friends with Jinbi, and he vowed that he would get her approval. In order to keep Akito away from her, Jinbi helped him win the favor of the female classmates. But when she saw Akito being pestered by her female classmates, she became very irritable. No matter how cold Jinbi was to him, Akito refused to give up. When Jinbi took leave to avoid Akito, Akito barged into her house. He figured that Jinbi must be really angry at him, so he suggested a fight, hoping she could vent her emotions. Although Akito eventually lost to Jinbi, they became good friends in the end. It's worth noting that the reason Akito wanted to be friends with her was because he thought she was a boy. Due to Jinbi's name sounding like a boy's name, Akito had a misconception. Even after the misunderstanding was cleared up, he didn't see her as a girl. Jinbi is always concerned about this issue and constantly tries to change his perception. As the memories end, Akito also recovers. The girls ask Akito who gave him the best care. Unexpectedly, Akito chooses Arashi because she put a wet towel on his forehead. As a reward for winning the competition, Arashi has the opportunity to be alone with Akito. Unexpectedly, Arashi shows a completely different side. She takes off the blindfold in front of him and becomes very beautiful and elegant. Afterward, Anastasia is in trouble. After taking a shower, she finds that she cannot find her underclothes. At this moment, she suddenly hears Arisa's screams. To save Arisa, Anastasia rushes over without underclothes on. Arisa claims that she sees a group of unknown objects and feels very scared. Akito jokes that what she sees is probably a yukai, and the girls are greatly frightened. After discussion, they decide to check on the situation nearby, but they walk around and find nothing unusual. On the way back, they come across a wall. As long as they climb over this wall, they can quickly reach the dormitory. The girls can't climb over walls, and Akiko thinks they can ride around Akito's neck. The other girls are very happy, and only Anastasia feels very shy because she doesn't wear underclothes. Afterward, they get scared by crows and accidentally get separated. Anastasia, alone with Akiko, recalls the scene when she first met Akito and Akiko. When they were in fifth grade, Akiko transferred to St. Liliana High School. Anastasia found Akiko very adorable and wished to be her friend. 
However, as it's under a girl, she felt very difficult to express her true feelings to Akiko. Six years later, Akito transferred to their school. Anastasia heard the story of their siblings and wondered why Akiko liked Akito. After meeting Akito, Anastasia developed a crush on him, but she is not very good at expressing her true thoughts and always said some flirty words to him. She told Akito that she would say strange things when she was nervous and told him not to take it seriously. Anastasia feels very happy to be friends with the Akito siblings. The memories end here. Anastasia asks Akiko what she will do if she can't find her underclothes one day. Akiko says that she will go to a convenience store and buy it, or wear a swimsuit instead, etc. To thank Akiko, Anastasia kisses her on the cheek. At this time, a gust of wind blows over, causing Akiko to accidentally see Anastasia's private part. Akiko notices Anastasia in an embarrassing situation and protects her as they return to the student dormitory. At that moment, a group of stray cats emerges from the bushes. Strangely, there are also many green flames around them. The girls are quite frightened and decide to sleep with Akito that night. Since Arisa has a habit of sleeping naked, Akito feels extremely embarrassed when he wakes up and sees her. To avoid losing to Arisa, Arashi forces everyone to remove their underclothes, leaving Akito feeling both happy and troubled. At the end of the story, Akito continues to study and live with the five beautiful girls every day. Interestingly, Akito has been quietly guarding a secret all along, which is that he has no biological connection to Akiko. He is afraid that if Akiko ever finds out the truth, she will become even crazier, so he decides to keep this secret forever. Even though Akiko doesn't know they aren't blood-related, she always fantasizes about having a close relationship with Akito. To her, whether he is her brother or not, love is all that mattered. The story ends here. Although the story between Akiko and Akito is the main storyline of this anime, I think the interactions between Akito and other four girls are also worth watching. Except for Akiko, which girl do you like? Comment below to tell me. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Bye.